in the final part of this three-part series on charity. In the final section of this class, we focused on your questions. Very practical, very relevant, very pointed questions that really fleshed out the class and the topic better than anything I could have done. Thank you. And God could have done differently, obviously. God could have a lot of equal portions of his world to all its inhabitants. But God wanted a dynamic world. He wanted a world where man is also a creator and also a provider. A world where we've give, we're given choices to fulfill our role, to renege on our role. So therefore, Jewish law requires every single person to give charity. Even a person who is so poor that he's living off charity has the command to give charity. Because charity is not to rectify the unequal distribution of wealth, then that law would make no sense. Charity is an opportunity given to each person to become a partner with God in creation. So when we give charity, we are God's partners in creation. Now, that might not be the only time. Any other time you've done something that you've really felt like a partner with God in creation? Because sometimes you could do something, maybe when you have children, that's a very God-like moment and you really feel like you're partnering with God to create a child, to bring another life into this world. There could be other moments. Anyone had a moment where they really felt they were like God's partners in creation? Well, if you feel it or not, when you give charity, you are God's partners in creation. And I don't know what charity is gonna look like by the redemption, because by the redemption, we'll all have all of our needs met very, very, very bountifully. So how will we give charity? Who's going to need charity? What organization would need charity? Everyone's just going to have everything flowing, flowing, flowing. So maybe there will be charity then and we'll find out. Or maybe not as easily as nowadays. So we want to take advantage. She is coming, but now we can still do this amazing act. This act literally like the creator. This act in the dynamics of creation. We're very blessed that we can give charity. I had a few more things to say, but I'm gonna cut at this time. We'll end now with this, this mini series on charity. And I hope that it all, it was practical and it helped and it clarified. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask me personally or in the WhatsApp. Rifka, do you have a question? Yeah, to what uh, charities, what is the order of uh, more importance, what kind of? We don't have that. There, there's nothing, no. no. I mean, there are certain things that we're told. Like we're told the poor people, like we're told if your relative is poor or non-relative, you have an obligation to give your relative first. We're told if there are poor people in your city or poor people in other cities, you have an obligation to give people in your city first. And we're told the people in Israel are considered like people in your city. But in terms of, is it better to give to a synagogue? Is it better to give to a school? Is it better to give to a poor person? Is it better to give to a mikvah? Is it better to give to a safer Torah? Is it better to redeem the captive? Is it better to bury the dead? It goes to a personal feeling. And I, it's so interesting. I, I mean, I'm saying these things are off my head, but um, I once had a situation, more than once, where I was involved with the, the commandment of, of burying a Jew who had no money. And this happened several times. But I think the third time we found out about some Jew in Florida. I don't know him at all but who cares so much about this commandment? And we contacted him and he was so glad to help. And he said, he said, I don't give all the money myself. I want everyone, all of my friends to be able to have a portion of this special commandment. And he fundraised for us. And like in an hour, he pulled all the money together. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm thinking of the other two times when I did it, it was really difficult. And here, ch -ch -ch -ch. and he was so happy. He was so grateful. He was so thankful to us that we gave him this opportunity. And I was like, wow, it's so special. So obviously you see for him, this was his point of passion. And someone else might say, well, that's a good cause and I'll give you $5. But something else is going to be their point of passion. So is one higher than the other? No. And I think it's a soul thing and it's experiential. It's what you're going through. It's the needs you had. It's what you're looking for from God. And maybe you're going in those directions. But as long as it's legitimate charities, as I just enumerated a few minutes ago, what we considered a legitimate cause of charity, it's all the same. Anyone else, any other questions, any other thoughts? Yes, I had a question. Um, it it wasn't about my deep soul searching, it was sending a child 
to um, Pegisha, for example, and paying for the expenses. Uh, when you helping your child who cannot afford some, is it? Um, it's not charity. It's considered. Um, uh, so that would be an interesting question. Yeah. yeah. Because if you're helping someone else, some stranger, you know what I'm saying, so to speak. So some somebody in our class who wants to go and you're raising money to help this person go on this spiritual course, of course it's charity, no question. For yourself, it's not charity, no question. The question is for your child. What I would say for the child situation would probably be, is the child completely financially independent? If this child is financially independent and you're not the source of their money, then why is helping them any different than helping anyone else? But if they're financially dependent on you for everything, <laughs> so you are the source that provides for their needs, then it gets sticky. And then if it was a practical question, I would ask a rabbi because I don't know the answer. But in general, if definitely, if you have a child who is financially independent and you want to buy mezuzahs for their house, that's a hundred percent you could use charity money. The same way you could use charity money to buy mezuzahs for anyone else's house. Should you use charity money to buy your own mezuzahs? No, but anyone else's house you could, oh. including your child who is financially independent and you know, you, you, you're not supposed to be, you're not the source of their money. So if you're choosing to give them mezuzahs, it's like choosing to give any other Jew mezuzahs. And that definitely could be from your charity money. Anyone else, any other questions? A yeah, quick question. You just mentioned something to give to somebody mezuzah. So it becomes as a giving things. I had the impression that um, you're talking about giving finance and giving money. Right. But so, if you were if you were paying, if you know someone that can't afford a mezuzah or could afford, but just don't but doesn't value it enough to spend money on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you want to help this Jew have a mezuzah, then mm -hmm. you can take your charity money and buy the mezuzah and give them that mezuzah and the money you spent on it can be part of your calculation of your charity. Say, well, why, why is it charity? I'm not giving them food and they're actually not poor anyway. Maybe they have more money than I have. <laughs> yeah, but helping another Jew do a mitzvah, you can spend charity money on. So it's mm -hmm. a mitzvah to have a mezuzah. <laughs> and therefore, if I can help someone else have a mezuzah, I'm allowed to spend charity money on that. But if that someone else was your child who's financially dependent on you, and you know now they're you know whatever moving out, but they're still financially dependent on you. Then I don't know, like mm -hmm. anything else with your child, because if for yourself you can't use charity money, so I don't know if you could in that situation. But if it was your child who's independent financially from you, who's not turning for you for any money, if you could buy a mezuzah for your next door neighbor from your charity mm -hmm. money, you should be able to buy a mezuzah for your child from your charity money. Mm -hmm. What's the difference? Mm -hmm. Anytime you're using your money to help another Jew fulfill a mitzvah, you can use charity money. Another mm -hmm. Jew wants to make the kitchen kosher. It's a big financial expenditure. Another Jew wants to upgrade to, I said, to have mezuzahs, to have tefillin. You know, all these things can be very expensive. You want to help a Jew have a mezuzah and candles for Hanukkah, or sorry, mm -hmm. menorah and candles for Hanukkah. You can use your charity money for any way to help another Jew do a mitzvah. Uh, there's another question. You talking about uh, calculating, calculating. I never thought about calculation. I just uh, just give whatever right. I can. Is that something you do? And I always felt like if you're calculating, it's almost like not it's not clean. It's not uh, right. And that's what I spent a long time talking about. And I think a lot of people have that perspective. And I think a lot of people in this class have that perspective. And mm -hmm. I explained the point of calculating is, you can always give more than the calculation, but mm -hmm. the calculation is to create a percentage. Because if you're not calculating, let's say you very generously gave $1,000 to charity. That's beautiful, mm -hmm. that's very generous. But if there was no calculation involved, then the money that got affected was that $1,000. And your work that was elevated was the work that created that thousand dollars. But if you have a calculation and you're earning $10,000 and you're giving 10%, so you gave a thousand, now all the $10,000 is affected because you needed the 10 to create the one and all the work to create the $10,000 is affected because you needed the work to create the 10,000 to create the one. 
So that's why actually a percentage is the best way to do it because then all the money and all the work to create the money is affected by that act of charity. But what you can do, of course, to stay generous is give more than the percentage. You can say, well, I'm giving 10% and however I'm going to do it, either I'm going to cut off from my paycheck 10% and put it in a separate account and that's my charity account and everything there only goes to charity or I'm just going to, like I do it, write on a piece of paper, money after money after money until I reach the money for this month and then I'll start the money for the next month and then I'll start the money for the next month. Whatever works for you. Figure out whatever is a simple bookkeeping for you. You can always be generous and give money and not calculate it. Like you cut off from your paycheck the thousand, it's in a separate account. But you could generously give from your own money if you want to feel I'm not just being calculating. Or you could say every month I'm supposed to give a thousand, but I'm going to thousand because I want to be generous. I don't want to be calculating. So you still can have the room for the generosity and giving more and not feeling, you know, I'm measuring my pennies up to what God is demanding from me, but you still want the baseline to be the percentage because okay. this then elevates the whole. And then second point, basically we give according to what we just discussed and you explaining us, it seems like you, when I say you, I mean like in general, you give money in order to receive money. Does it sound not... Uh, that, like so that's, you that's a great help? point. That's a very good point. And the answer is, I give money because I was very well trained. I was very well educated by my father, who I just mentioned was very generous. So I, I'm very lucky. To me, it's very natural. But let's say a person literally is giving money to create money. That's fine. Why is that fine? Because as I said before, God recognizes that for many people, it's very hard to give money. For many people, they are so financially strapped. And giving this money means like what I could do with this money, what I need the money for, but I'm giving it away just because God sent me to it. You know, people also sometimes get this feeling of like, I worked hard for that money. I just work hard. I'm working hard for my money. And then I'm just giving away this tremendous amount, like at least 10%, if not more. I'm giving a lot of money away. You know, that's hard. And that we said is why God is saying, test me, you will see, I will create the money for you. God doesn't say that for any other commandment. God doesn't say, keep Shabbos, you can test me, you'll see. Keep kosher, you can test me, you'll see. God wants us to keep kosher and God wants us to keep Shabbos. But God specifically says it about charity because God really knows that for a lot of people in this world, it's so difficult. And as I explained throughout these last, today in our previous two classes, spiritually it's so bad mm -hmm. as we were saying more than anything else that moves your animal soul quicker than anything else that can bring the redemption it all these things that are it's taking the totality of self and time past present and future all these things we say uniquely about charity that's why we said in the talmud jerusalem the jerusalem talmud when it says the commandment it means charity so because charity is challenging and so spiritually important that's why God says, if all you're thinking about is, I want money and I'm giving charity, great. I'm glad you're giving charity. I'm glad mm -hmm. you trust in me enough and believe in me enough and are giving charity. That's fine too. Okay. So, so obviously, uh... obviously we'd like to, we'd like to be elevated beyond that. But if that's our baseline, God says, great, no problem. Just keep giving charity. Somebody came once, I believe it was to the altar of the first Rebbe of Chabad. And he said like, you know, I feel bad when I give charity. You know, I'm feeling my like ego involved and I feel bad. That's not how I want to give charity. And the Reverend responded to me, said, well, your ego might or might not be involved, but the poor person now is full and not hungry. So like, you know, in the end of the day, you gave your charity and someone benefited. And that's the bottom line. That's the most important thing. But of course, it's nice to have these higher and higher and higher levels as is very, very perfect. Anyone else? I just wanted to mention how lucky we are actually to discuss this and, and be on the giving end uh, rather than having, you know, to to ask for, for help. I'm really bad in asking for help and I, I just thank Hashem that He just gives me what I need and gives me enough to give charity. You are so right. That is so true. That is such a blessing and it's actually very humbling because again, if God's creating a world in which there are people that are giving and people that are receiving, it's very humbling to think that God is giving you that position.
that you can give to others. And as we said, every person is supposed to be in that position. Even someone who is supported by charity is supposed to give charity. Every yeah. one of us should have that position of being able to be a giver. So we will end at this point. And again, if you have anything else, any other questions, you can put them in our WhatsApp. You can send them to me privately. And we should, as Rachel said, always be merited to be givers. And we should all see all the blessings, the financial blessings and all the other blessings, because it's so important to God that we do this. And it's so powerful in creating Mashiach.